The Game Awards just happened, giving Sonic fans two brownies to feast on rather than just one. We already knew beforehand that we would be getting a trailer for Sonic the Hedgehog 2, but that there would also be another Sonic announcement here, which was confirmed not to be Sonic Origins, leaving our options to just Sonic Frontiers or the Sonic Prime Netflix series that we haven't seen or heard anything truly new about since February. So the Sonic 2 trailer immediately made me feel overjoyed with the opening shot that mirrors that of the very beginning of Sonic Adventure 1 with Sonic overlooking the nighttime city skyline, hearing police sirens, and then jumping off of a building to investigate the disturbance. However, this time, instead of chaos, the disturbance is just some common thugs, which is the main reason I got so happy because this is our first time we really see Sonic the Hedgehog dealing with smaller scale crimes like certain superheroes such as Daredevil, Batman, and my personal favorite, Spider-Man, go up against. I think the closest thing we had to this before was the Babylon Rogues from Sonic Riders, so it's really cool to see. The other references also had me really excited and really made me feel at home especially when we see what's either a Chaos Emerald or the Master Emerald, in which it is most likely the Master Emerald, considering this later shot of Sonic overlooking Angel Island. I love seeing the return of Jim Carrey as Dr. Robotnik, as well as seeing the original Red Tornado model, Sonic snowboarding on Ice Cap, and Sonic catching a missile and throwing it back at Eggman, which could be a reference to a Season 2 episode of Sonic X. And of course, the very final moment that everyone is raving about, where Knuckles grabs Sonic mid-homing attack and punches him, was also really satisfying to watch. This is of course a reference to the opening of Sonic 3, where Knuckles punches the Chaos Emeralds out of Super Sonic. So you bet that I knew that this was going to happen, but I wouldn't call it predictable in a bad way at all. Like I said, this was really cool to see, and references such as this really go to show that the people behind these movies really do know the source material. And moments like this that feel ripped straight from the source material really go a long way for me. I've been thinking since early this year that I really don't see how this movie could fail. I think worst case scenario would be that it would turn out a disappointing sequel that's not as good as the first one, but is still a good movie nonetheless. But that's only my worst case scenario. I have no doubts that this will be better than the first one especially after seeing this trailer. There's really only one more thing I could ask for from this movie that I have always been hoping for, which is the appearance of Metal Sonic, which judging by the trailer, it seems like we won't be seeing Metal Sonic in the movie. However, he could still be teased as a post credit scene to imply that he will be in Sonic the Hedgehog 3, which that would still have me really excited. If anything, maybe it's best that they save Metal Sonic for a third, or possibly even a fourth movie. I mean, come on, let's face it, we know they're gonna make this a trilogy. All in all, with Sonic 2 coming out April 8th, 2022, and Spider-Man 2 slated for its 2023 release date, my two favorite franchises are absolutely killing it right now and the next two years are going to be a ball. The Sonic Frontiers trailer, I didn't think it was bad, I just think it was disappointing. I really feel like we waited so long for so little, which is the same way I felt about the little tease they released back in June. Honestly, if I hadn't seen the rumors beforehand, I probably wouldn't have even gotten the impression from this trailer that this would be an open world game. 
And this definitely feels like the kind of trailer that you would see at an event revealing next-gen consoles for the first time, offering as a graphical and slash or engine showcase, rather than being a trailer coming out a year after the consoles have been out. They didn't show any real gameplay out of this, yes there were shots of the environment that was in-game footage but nothing else. But what we do see of the world looks beautiful, but hopefully the game will play as good as it looks. However, the leaks do say that the controls have been given a much needed overhaul, which is great to hear. I never really talked about the leaks slash rumors on this channel before because I thought that stuff was going to be fake. I mean, does anyone remember the rumors that said that Sonic Forces would be called Sonic Inferno or Sonic Resistance? Sally Acorn would be in the game making her first video game debut and that someone was going to die in the game? Well, clearly none of that ever happened. However, it definitely seems like the rumors are 100% true seeing as how the game title is in fact Sonic Frontiers, just as the rumor suggested, as well as it being open world. Which I must say that initially the rumors were saying that this game was going to be called Sonic Rangers, and I'm so glad it's not going to be called Sonic Rangers, because that is such a stupid name in my opinion. It makes it sound like a Sonic game, where Sonic joins the Mystic Ruins Explorers and has some ridiculous plot about saving the environment or some nonsense. Don't get me wrong, I'm all for saving the environment, but I don't need that shoved down my throat in a Sonic game. Obviously, the rest of the trailer is just CGI footage, which hopefully there will be CG cutscenes in the game, considering that Sonic Forces used CGI in its trailers, but there was no CGI in the game at all. However, one thing that really bugged me in this trailer is that in this shot, you can see that they reused Sonic's character model from Sonic Forces, which in of itself was a reused character model from Sonic Lost World. I swear, that better be a placeholder. I mean, come on guys. Sonic Lost World will be close to being 10 years old when this game comes out. We're on the PS5 and Xbox Series X now, and you're still using a character model from the Wii U? Like I said, really hoping that's just a placeholder, and that Sonic will have a new model in the final version of the game. One last thing to point out is that we still don't know what that zap thing from the last trailer means, but now considering that this is an open world game inspired by Breath of the Wild, this could be related to a puzzle in the game, or this could be related to the enemies that we see in the new trailer. Who knows, we may not even find out what it means until the game comes out, which I actually think that would be a pretty cool marketing idea. Well, either way, considering that the rumors were true, if this game is good, I'm gonna wait until I get a PS5 to play this game. Because if this game ends up being something truly special, I'm gonna want to experience the best possible version, as well as just have something new to play when I eventually get one. But like I said in my Spider-Man 2 video, I'm waiting for a Slim or Pro model to release. Yes, it'll be more money. Yes, it means I'll have to wait longer but I think it'll be worth the wait and extra investment in the end. So, if this is the direction I end up going, don't expect me to talk about this game much when it comes out. However, like I said, that's probably only IF the game is going to be good, because this game is going to be a massive make or break moment for me. Because I'm really hoping that I don't have to wait five years for another Sonic game to come out after Frontiers. Because 
it's really starting to look like that's going to become the norm at this point. If the game is good, I'll be okay with that. But even if this game is just okay, if I have to wait five years for the next game to release, where I won't be too fond of that being too great either, I may as well quit calling myself a Sonic Tuber at that point. Because not only will there be nothing to really talk about until that time comes, but I won't even want to talk about Sonic games anymore. Not only would this mean that the rate at which we get new games is way slower than it used to be, since we used to get new Sonic games once every one to two years, but it would also be the final nail in the coffin for me to be able to say that the quality of the games that we're getting have also decreased significantly. I play other games and have moved on to other much better fan bases now. Sonic isn't my only available option anymore, so this better not be a letdown. I'll still be excited for Sonic movies, TV shows, and even comics, but I will basically give up on the games if Frontiers lets me down. But I do have good hopes for this game just from the simple fact alone that for the first time in history, they'll actually be taking their time with this game. You guys may think that's an exaggeration, but it really isn't. Basically every single Sonic game was rushed out in some way, shape, or form. So Sonic Team saying that they're taking their time is a first. Plus, I have been really wanting an official open world Sonic game ever since the demo for the Sonic Utopia fan game came out, so hopefully this fulfills my dreams in a very gratifying way. Other stuff that caught my attention from the Game Awards is the Wonder Woman game reveal, Cuphead DLC reveal, Among Us VR, and our look at upcoming characters in Genshin Impact. Obviously, we did not see anything regarding Spider-Man 2, but I wasn't expecting to anyway, so I don't have any problems with that. We also did not see or hear anything of Splatoon 3, which I think is a little bit of a missed opportunity, but that's fair, I suppose. So that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. And this year is almost over, so happy holiday season, everybody.